Oh, Paddy. Oh, Paddy, that's a curragh. That's a curragh. They were used for the shark fishing, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And were there many of them down here at that time? There'd be eight or nine of them in the bay, down on the strand. And who owned them at that time? Who were the main fishermen down here? Well, there were three crews. One of them was Charlie Tom O'Malley. Yeah. There was a crew called Scots. Yeah. And there was a crew called Sweeney's. Joe Sweeney was the man who bought the sharks. And did they work independently or did they work uh, as a group, the, the, the as a three, team? The three crews of fishermen worked separately for themselves and they sold the fish to Joe Sweeney. <laughs> Joe Sweeney sent a trawler in here to take the sharks and tow them off to Porchy. And would there be many sharks in it? The years I was here, they were very, very plentiful and there'd be 40, 50, maybe 100 sharks killed in a day. In one day, yeah. Yeah, but it was a short season. It only went on for about six weeks or so. And what size would they be? They were, they were uh, when you see the length of the curve there, they yeah. would be easily longer than that. <laughs> so you had spotters up in the hill up there, yeah? The spotter was there watching the salmon. Salmon? Because there was a salmon fishery going on at the same time. At the same time? Yes. By the same people? And, uh, the same people and the salmon ran later into the season and earlier so the the salmon fishery was going on at the same yeah. time so the spotter would be up on the hill up there this the spotter was up on the hill but this was an ideal place to do this kind of a fishery because the man on the bank could see the fish coming along the strand and he could tell the man down in the curra to close the net as soon as the salmon was going into the into the opening of the net. And the, the, the net was then hauled up here on the strand by the people on the on the shore. And would they catch many salmon in the net? Sometimes there'd be one, uh, sometimes a pair, and maybe occasionally half a dozen at a time. So there were no huge numbers? There weren't very big numbers caught here in my time. I think 50 or so was about the most I ever saw in a day. A bit in a day, yeah? Well, that's a lot of salmon, yeah. A lot of salmon. And what and weight would they be? Oh, anything up to 20 pounds. Big fish? 8 pounds for 20. Good big fish, yeah. Good big fish. Yeah. And the, the price was very good. I can remember them going to the market and getting 7 and 6. It was a lot pound, of money that time. Which was a lot of money. Yeah. One fish was in a week's wages for a man. Where did the shark oil go to mostly? It was sent abroad, it was sent all over the world. Mostly Germany as far as I know. Joe Merchant, uh, the, Joe Sweeney from the Sound, he organised the market and he started the fishery because he saw the potential. Mm -hmm. And he hired the crews and paid them for the fish. I think he used to give about seven pounds for a shark. So you weren't encouraged to become a fisherman for life, no? I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody said, you changed the harpoon for the needle. Yes, indeed. <laughs> became yeah. a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you had happy days here. I had great days here. Yeah, dear. Well, yeah. it's hard to see where you couldn't. It's so beautiful here, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. That's a uh, key minon over there, is it? Minon Cliffs. The minon Cliffs. In the, in the distance, you can see the reek. That's right, yeah, go Patrick. Yeah. And outside that you have uh, North Connemara. A uh, beautiful place, isn't it? Uh, and Ackle Beg is this side of the reef. Yeah. And they're carrying more and carrying more south. And up to the left then you have the roadway down from... You have, have uh, Crohan up here behind you. Yeah. yeah. And the road coming down. Uh, the years I was here, that was only a, a cart track, grass going up in the middle of it. It was developed then in the early 60s. I think. Well, how did they fish for them here, though? They set a net, tied it onto one end of it, onto the cliff out there, onto the rocks. Yeah. And they dropped it in a straight line out from the out from the rock. And the fish blundered along, got tangled in the net. And as soon as 
the fisherman saw the saw the splashing. Uh, they launched a carrot here, on, or two carrots on the strand, rowed out, backed along the net, and one man would hold the net, and the other man alongside him in the stern of the carrot would plunge with the spear to try to kill the shark. And sometimes he'd kill him with two or three strokes, sometimes he might take 15 or 20 stabs to get to a vital a vital part. And what's, what was the vital part? What would ensure uh, a kill? I think this, this is spine probably. Spinal cord, yeah. They would sometimes succeed in cutting the spinal cord. Sometimes they just managed to cut into the gills and the shark would bleed out very quickly and quit among the blood washing around the water. And which way did the fish come? They came in here at the eastern end of the bay. Yeah along the strand, swam along the strand and turned out and they would go out between that red buoy out there and the shore and that was where the nets were set. And could you see them from the shore now? Oh you could, you could see them very yes. often. You, you Sometimes you'd see the two, the, the fin and the tail sticking up or sometimes maybe just the tail fin. And what would you do, would do with them after they caught them then? When, the, when they were caught here they were towed away to Porchin by a trawler, mm -hmm. six six at a time, on on a, a big boat on a trawler, mm -hmm. and they were uh, hauled up on the beach in uh, Porchin Harbour, and cut open, the liver taken out, the liver was boiled or steamed to extract the oil, which was then barreled and sent away to be used abroad somewhere. And what was it used for, the oil, mostly? It, it was used for a number of different manufacturing processes. I think it might have been used as a machine oil, uh, also in the manufacture of perfumes, believe it or not, uh, cosmetics, and at the time there was a great shortage of oils after the war, so it was a, a very valuable product. And would you get much oil from... Uh one uh, shark or? Well there was a half a ton of liver in a shark and it would have filled maybe two barrels or maybe three barrels. And were they, would they catch many shark in a season? At the, height, at the height of the fishery they were getting over a thousand a year. A thousand a year, yeah. yeah. That was a lot of fish, yeah? So over the peri period of about 20 years there were about 10,000 sharks. And did they and use they, the... They Were there other factors affecting that cheese with wheat? I think the price of oil went down as yeah. well. So it wasn't really economic to do it anymore. Yeah. And, it was um, very labour intensive and hard work. Mm. But it was a, you, you, were, you spent time down here, you did? I used to come here and stay in one of the huts as a tea boy with the, one of the crews, Charlie did Tom's crew. Mm. Did you enjoy it? And, oh, I really did. I used to love it. Uh, that there is the remains of the hut where I used to stay and sleep. The pure stones and there, the rocks there. Yeah. You can still see the chimney down here. If you want to come down and have a look. You can see it there, yeah? So you came here as a young kid? Yes, I was 14 or 15 years I suppose at the time. And I used to sleep there. <laughs> the fire at night. This was the fireplace where we cooked our meals. There's a little wooden table here and over there you can see a little spout with the water coming yeah. coming from the hill. Beautiful water, fresh water. And we had a barrel of shark liver sitting outside the door. Yeah. And when you wanted to make tea or get a good strong fire you go out, take a lump of sharp liver, bring it up and throw it on the embers, and it blazed up and made a fine fire and boiled the kettle. And were there many men working here that you were boiling for? There were nine men in this crew. Nine in this crew, yeah. Nine in this crew. And what did you eat? Uh, we had salmon and trout. Out of here? 
uh, out of here. Your kitchen caught, too. Caught outside there in the in the bay. Pure fresh. Just inside the shark uh, the shark nets. And, and you just boil it up in a great big pot with sea water, boiled in sea water, and turn it out onto the table here. Yeah. Drain <laughs> off the water and turn, turn the pot on top and everybody helps themselves. And you have great big cakes which would be brought in every day by somebody from Dua, from the village. They walk in with a bag of bread and fresh milk. And we had bread and salmon. And would you stay overnight? Oh yeah, we stayed here for the whole day. Because you worked until nightfall. The men would be very tired. It was a long way to go back to Dua. And they'd be starting again with first light in the morning. There would be three nights left set overnight. And they would hope to have a fish in each one for the morning. And that was the first thing in the morning, down to the curra, launch the curras, take the sharks out of the net, and set the net again. And how did they spend the night after they um, fished for the day? Did they just rest up or did they well, was any the crack or cards? Or? They play cards, uh, sit in the hut here, talk, uh, and they'd be very tired and go to bed very early. I, I used to sleep here with Charlie. Uh, most of some of them slept out where that green grass is there. Out in the open, an yeah. Extension of the hut there, and some of them slept over in Sweeney's hut farther over. Was the hut up there behind you? Who was that hut? No, the, that was only used as a store. That was a store hut, storage, yeah. The nets were made up there. We used to make the nets up on the green. When you were when the boats weren't busy. Uh, the time would be spent making and mending uh, with the nets. Did the nets break easily with the big fish? Well, yeah, they, they constantly were torn and worn, and they had to be repaired very frequently. So that's an old boiler, that rusty, that old rusty cylinder? The remains of an old boiler that was used for boiling up the shark liver when they did it here in Kim. So they boiled them on site? They boiled the them here for a while, but it wasn't very economical. Yeah. It was difficult to get them ashore, drag them up, drag the, the liver up the hill here and fuel then to boil it was also a problem. And the boiler was too small as well, it was? And the boiler was small. The quantity, yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was much more sensible to tow the fish three miles into the Purchin okay. and haul them up there where there's a, a big harbour and the crane and facilities. Okay. Oh, this is uh, a store or a shed or what was it? No, it was a bunkhouse. Uh, a bunkhouse? Uh, known as Scott's Shed. And who slept up there? Scott's I team, I suppose, was it? Some, uh, some fellow called Scott, mm. who ran a crew here during those years. There seems to be less known about him, is there? There is, yes. Uh, he's a bit of a mystery man. He certainly had a nice... Place, didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. He wasn't a local, whoever, wherever he came from. Okay. And farther over, you have a, a little hut that was built by Joe Merchant himself, and known as Sweeney's hut. And there were maybe ten or twelve uh, people sleeping in that. So Joe Sweeney had his own little business there. He did. Oh, he did. Yes. Uh, well, he had his own crew. His own crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But he bought all the sharks, I think. And were the, were the people in that when you were here now? Oh, they were, yeah. 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 And you'd meet them? They were all part of oh, the yeah. team? The, the uh, well, there were three individual crews. Yeah. Three individual crews. But they all worked together? But, uh, they took turns. They, turned, uh, they took turns. Yeah. That might be what you call a mehel, was it? Mm. Not really. They weren't that much together. Uh, each crew was for itself. Okay. Charlie, Charlie Tom O'Malley that I was with, uh, he was very individual. He had his own team of men. And he, he caught the fish and sold them to Joe Merchant. Are there many of them fishermen alive now? That were very, here at the very few. Very few, of yeah. the people who were there in my time, there were only four or five still, uh, still living. And who were they? Patrick Mack. Patrick McNamara. Yeah. Francie McNamara. 
Michael Gielty, mm -hmm. the owner of the pub. Yeah. Anthony Gielty, his brother. Now, Paddy, this is where the sharks were brought to? Yeah, this, this is Porchin Harbour. The sharks were towed in here. Yeah. They were uh, thrown up here on this slipway. Yeah. Uh, this area here, from my back right, right up to here, yeah. would have been filled with sharks, one on top of the other. And you could actually step off the wall there, walk on the sharks all the way across and up on the other wall. There could have been maybe 100 or even 150 sharks in this area at one stage. And people used to do that, they'd walk across on them, yeah? Oh yes, it was a dare to run across on the back of the shark without falling off. Maybe you fell off? I never did. I never tried it. Could be kind of hard to get up, could it? It would be difficult. Were they slippery? Yeah. No, no, they're rough skin. Rough skin, so they you could... They were rough skin. <laughs> yeah, they were pulled up here then, yeah. up along this little slip. Yeah. And put into a boiler house. There was a hut up there with, uh, with big boilers in it. Mm. The liver was cut up. The flesh was cut into chunks and put into burn house lorries and taken away to Valnaslow. And did there they get paid for that or was that out. free? Did they get it for free to get I rid dispose of it? No, I expect I expect there was some uh, value in the flesh. Mm. It was made into um, some kind of a, a fish fertilizer. Fish food. Not fish food, but yeah, a, fer a fertilizer. Fertilizer for the land, okay. Fertilizer for the land, yeah. Okay. Fish meal, they, they called it. <laughs> and uh, there were great big drums up here, massive uh, steel tanks. Yeah. And they would they would fill up over the season with shark oil, which was then barreled and taken away and exported. Uh, Joe Sweeney was uh, operating the whole. Outfit. Just his business, yeah. Just his business. There was another processing plant farther over there. Uh, I think that might have been one of the Scots. He was the competition? He was the competition. Hmm. But, uh, so, that much known about Scots, no? No. Hmm. No. And did, no. They, did they last the whole duration of the business, I wonder, or did they? Uh, no, I think they faded out of it fairly quickly. Hmm. Uh, they there were a lot of people employed. There were, there were maybe. In Kim, there would have been up to 30 fishermen. Uh, on the boat towing, there would have been another dozen, I suppose. And here in Porchin, there would have been 30 or 40 men employed for the season, processing the, the sharks, cutting them up, mm. boiling the livers, extracting the oil. So that's best part of 100 people involved in the business. For, eh? for the season. Yeah. And I suppose there was, boat, main, there was boat maintenance then, there was? And there was boat building, boat maintenance, and other work following on from that. The spin-off was huge, and it kept a lot of people from having to emigrate to England for the summer months. So there were a lot of people emigrated, didn't there? From oh, yes, the Island. That time, at that time, there was no other industry in the island. Hmm. Uh, was tourism developed that time? Tourism was beginning to improve. Mm. Uh, you had the Ackelhead Hotel, the Amethyst Hotel, and a few other small places, and B&Bs were starting up. Mm. But it was a, very much a subsistence economy in the area. Mm. Everybody mm. had their own cow, their own little bit of uh, ground where they set potatoes, vegetables. There was no milk being brought into the island, for instance. There was no butter being brought into the island, or very little. Tea and sugar were the main things you bought in the grocery shop. There were no vegetables to be bought in the shops, because everybody had their own. And so they lived cheaply in that sense. They were kind of self-sufficient, were they? Self-sufficient to an extent. Mm. And generally the men went away in springtime to England, or came here to the Sharks to work and sent money home. And what did they do in England? In England they worked on public works, they worked in farms, they did agricultural work and uh, they built a lot of roads as the cameraman knows <laughs> and a lot of the big buildings in England and they travelled all over the world as well with the, the big companies like McAlpine and Taylor Woodrow Wimpy's? Uh, Wimpy, Murphy's, mm. 
something like that. Well, this is 2015 now. How have things changed? Things have changed a lot. Uh, if somebody leaves the island now, they generally don't come back. And families will not split up as easily, where long ago the wife and the children stayed in Akko, and the man went. Nowadays, if the man breaks, the wife and children are likely to go with them, either to England, to Australia, wherever. And what's the population trend like? The population is going down, the numbers in the schools are going way down. Mm. They're about a quarter of what they were in the 50s, or maybe even more. So the future doesn't look too good for Echolite? Like it's not looking too bright just at the moment, but then wheels turn and things change. Mm. There could be a big change in the tourism industry. The Greenway has brought in a lot of people. And they all have to be accommodated and looked after when they're here. And I think we're good at looking after them. The Wild Atlantic Way should improve things. The Wild things. Atlantic Way might uh, a, few more a little bit for us. Uh, yeah, fantastic scenery in down here. Eco tourism. Mm. Great beaches. Lovely beaches. All blue flagged. An odd good day. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Mm. A lot of good days this year. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks be to God, as you said yourself. So. Things are looking not too bad.